Okay, I am Sari, uh, a senior software engineer here at Soluto, and I'll be talking about how to achieve how to achieve a, a practical canary release strategy, and how we did it using uh, Argo rollouts. So, um, whenever anyone wants to make a deployment in a backend service, you're always worried about reducing uh, the risk of something happening during the deployment or after like a bug or something happening in the deployment that will break production. So in order to reduce the risk, you usually go in and start writing good code, do great code reviews, and then go ahead and start writing tests, units, black box, integration, all kinds of tests, just because you want to be so sure. After all that is done, you're still skeptical. You're still worried. We, we always get this feature, some of us, if not most of us. We're still worried that something might go wrong after the deployment. So we start monitoring our metrics, our dashboards, thinking something is not going to happen now after deploying. Why do we think? Why do you always think like this? It's because the production environment is different than our tests our, when we're debugging, when we're deploying, sorry, when we're testing. Um, for example, it can be a resource issue in production that can break your deployment. It can be an unexpected traffic or usage on production. It can simply be a missing test. Regardless of the reason, this requires the need for introducing a new layer or yet another layer of protection that can reduce the risk of doing a backend deployment. This is OK. I need to be like this? OK, thank you. It looks weird. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is w this is where the canary release strategy comes in as this additional protection layer. Um, so in this talk, I'll be explaining what is a canary release strategy, especially in backends, and how to move to a canary release strategy. And we'll take Arco rollouts as an example, and then the juicy stuff, which is how to define a good canary release strategy. Um, regardless of the tool that you're using, Kubernetes or not, Argo rollouts or not, this, this will be uh, of use of, to anyone here. And then we will move to what we learned after using this uh, for more than a year in Soluto. Okay, so what is a canary release strategy? Um, in a canary release strategy, when you're, when you're making a deployment, you deploy your change as a new replica set uh, to run alongside your stable replicas. And you will use a canary orchestrator that will shift some of the traffic, a small percentage of the traffic, from your stable replica set to the canary replica set. And it will let it run for a while. In parallel, your metrics provider will be collecting metrics from all of your replicas. And these metrics should be indicative of how well your code, your, your new code is running. After a while, your Canary Orchestrator will uh, run a query against your metrics provider. It can be either Prometheus, Datadog, or any metrics provider that collects and provides these metrics for you. Um, and compare the result with an expected uh, baseline, um, for whether it's success rate or um, delays in the system. And based on the, resu the result, it will either kill or continue with, with the rollout. By continue, we mean that it will promote the Canary replica to replace your stable replicas, meaning that now your new code is now in production and there's no more old code. To kill, it means that if something wrong happens, then um, it, the Canary replica will die, keeping all the replica or stable pods, stable replicas, uh, running as is. This means, I mean, the core idea here is that you have a small percentage assigned to the Canary replica so that if something wrong happens, only a small fraction of your customers are exposed to this issue. And also for a small period because the orchestrator is running and checking all the time. So this is basically a Canary release strategy and this is what Argo rollouts is made to do. So what is Argo rollouts? Argo rollouts is, uh, is an addition to Kubernetes that you can install and it will add custom resource definitions that allow you to do additional rollout strategies, such as Canary, Blue Green, Experiments, etc. Argo Rollouts is also part of the Argo project. And as in the previous lecture, it integrates, said, 
Um, it integrates, integrates well with Argo CD, Argo Events, and all the other sub projects part of the Argo project. And around April, um, it became a cloud native incubator. So Argo Rollouts is there to stay. Okay, now to create, a, a, to move to a Canary uh, rollout in Kubernetes, all you have to do is change, after installing Argo rollouts, all you have to do is just change your deployment YAML from kind deployment to rollout. This allows you to um, define Canary rollout strategies instead of the traditional rollout strategies in Kubernetes, and they're very simple. It, as you can see, it's just defining the steps, and as we explained about uh, before about the, how the Canary lease uh, strategy works, you set a weight shifting the traffic for 25% from your stable replica to Canary replica, pause, let it run for a while, and then run an analysis, and so on. So this brings us to analysis. What is an analysis? It's the process of measuring uh, your uh, state, your code state, how is it running in production. In Argo rollouts, this is actually defined in a file. Um, it's where you define your query, whether you're using Prometheus or not, uh, how to measure it, where to measure, the, your thresholds, uh, your success and failure thresholds, etc. So technically now, we, can, we know how to define a canary release strategy. But then comes the question, what do I do? What is a good canary analysis or canary release strategy? I mean, there's so many factors playing here in, in part uh, to define what is a good canary release strategy, but the most important factor is your use case, your developer's needs, and your infrastructural capabilities. So in this talk, I'm going to, instead of saying, okay, here's a, a good canary release strategy, instead of doing that, I will show you some guidelines that will help you in writing your own good canary release strategy that fits you. So let's start with the what, what to measure. So in a canary, uh, sorry, sorry, according to Google's SRE book, there are four most important metrics or indicators that you need to measure. They are called the four golden signals. And they are, the first two are traffic and error rate. They correlate with each other. Second is latency. How long does it take to finish uh, running a specific operation? And fourth, it's saturation. Saturation means is how close are we to full usage of our resources. It's not the easiest to measure, but usually it correlates with error rate and latency because the closer we get to 100% usage, it manifests itself as errors and latency. So you can think about what to measure here depending on your need and um, how, how much are you willing to invest in measuring and implementing the measurement actually. Next, how to measure. So there is no one how. Um, I'll, I'll explain our um, canary analysis, our canary strategy. And sorry, just a second. OK. So I'll, uh, I'll go over our uh, canary analysis and strategy so that um, I'll show you what we took into consideration when we were defining our strategy. It can help you know what you can take into consideration too when you're defining your own canary strategy. So our canary st strategy was split into three phases. The first phase is called as a warm up and fail fast. Of course, we want to give our service uh, uh, some time to warm up, and then we want it to fail fast if something wrong happens. Why? Because our developers are in Saluto are doing are making developer deployments tens or hundreds a day, and imagine a situation where they make a deployment and they have to wait three hours for the canary analysis to finish and say, okay, you have a problem in your code. It's gonna be very frustrating. And it also impacts velocity. We want the developers to continue moving fast as they were before introducing the canary strategy. So that's why it should be fail fast and it looks like this. We move 5% of the traffic to the canary replica and then we let it run for enough time to collect 50 data points, 13 minutes. 50 data points is meaning that we need to collect, allow our metrics provider to collect 50 times. So where did 50 come from and where did 13 minutes come from? Um, according to the ARIMA model, ARIMA model is um, an 
statistical analysis model for analyzing and forecasting uh, time series data. And here we want to forecast our canary replica, how is it going to behave in the future in production. And it, the model says that in order to have a reliable analysis or a reliable forecast, you need to at least have 50 data points in your time series data. So we need to run out to let the service run enough time for our metrics provider to be able to collect these 50 data points. And in our case, we're using Prometheus. Uh, we were able to, it was able to do that within 13 minutes. So you can calculate that now based on what you have implemented in your own infrastructure. So we let it run for 13 minutes, and at the end we measure the total success rate opposed, as opposed to error rate, uh, latency or both against a baseline of 50, 95%. This is the first step. The next one is uh, way more simple than the first one. Setting the weight, increasing the traffic shifted to Canary to 7%, running it for one hour, because now we passed the critical phase which acts as like a uh, a smoke test in production with traffic, with production traffic also. So we are free now to increase the duration and let it run for more, one more hour and do the analysis, which is the measurement six times. Step three is the same, but we increase the traffic to 10%. So we took this formula, we run it for a while, and we immediately saw benefits. I mean, it, it saved us in multiple occasions, really. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it here. So <laughs> it works, it works. And uh, that also allowed us to focus on more important stuff rather than panicking on issues on production. But at the same time, we noticed things that we need to be aware of. I'm gonna share them with you. First one is, it can bring down production. Yes, it can happen. Argo rollouts can do that. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it in details in a bit. Uh, next is visibility. Believe me, that the more you add visibility, the better. It's, it's never enough. I'll talk about more about it. And third is you need to enable your developers to interact with the process. So let's start with the first one. Algo rollouts can bring down production by going into a limbo state where it's not able to do anything. It's just stuck. Let's take this case uh, as an example. You have your production replicas running, and then uh, they're reading their configuration from a config map in a Kubernetes environment. And then you decide you want to make a deployment to start a Canary uh, rollout. So it, it replaces one of your production replicas with a Canary replica. And at the same time, your deployment updates the config map. But let's suppose that during the Canary analysis, it, the, the replica is bad. So now Argo rollouts wants to start rolling back. So it kills the Canary replica and tries to bring up back the production replica as it was. But this replica is trying to initialize itself and read the configuration from the config map that was not roll back, rolled back. Because in Argo rollout, it's not actually rolling back the state. It's just killing the pods and restoring uh, other pods. So it goes into a crash loop, trying to initialize itself, not finding the configuration it's needed, it's needing, and then Argo rollouts go into state that it's unable to roll out the canary, or promote it, or even roll back and uh, be in a stable state. So this case actually can happen in any external resource change, um, whether it's a database or anything outside of uh, the pods. And the recommendation here is that you need to make your change here backwards compatible as much as possible. If that's not an option, then avoid, avoid deploying with Canary in these cases. OK, moving on to visibility. OK, so Argo rollouts provides metrics uh, where you can collect and uh, visualize them in, as graphs, showing you, showing you and your developers or anyone the, the state of the Canary uh, rollout and the phases it's going through. Uh, in this visualization here, we're showing the fast fail, uh, sorry, the fail fast step, and so on. Um, it's also good to show what the the canary analysis is doing, or the the actual query that it's running, so that if it fails, you know that it would be failing. So here, for example, it's 
it's returning 100% success rate, here it's failing, it will help your developers to know what's happening when something happens. Finally, enabling your developers. So your developers need to be able to override the Canary process. In some cases, if you define a global Canary uh, rollout strategy in the company or for your developers, there are always specific use cases where you need a specific configuration or tweak or change in the process. And you need to be able to provide this capability to your developers. And in our case, because we're using Helm charts, uh, it was easy uh, to add this to the Helm chart template as a default strategy and the developers can use the values to override this uh, strategy as they need. Next, you need to allow them to control the Canary process. Let's assume there's an urgent bug fix, bug fix that needs to be deployed. It cannot afford to wait for the Canary analysis to finish and promote and replace all the pods. So your developers need to be able for at least to skip Canary when needed or disable it. And what better way to do that, if you're using Argo rollouts, than using Argo CD. So in Saluto, we're using Argo CD, and out of the box, it integrated with Argo rollouts when we adopted it. And uh, it shows this nice UI that shows you the state of your uh, rollout, all the pods, everything is here, in addition to providing you with easy capability to uh, skip the canary, just promote it, and that's it, restart it, abort it, resume, uh, and it's a powerful yet simple. Okay, to sum things up, um, in a canary rollout strategy, it is recommended to only route traffic to your canary from 5 to 10% as we did in, the, in our strategy. Less than 5%, you start risking having a reliable canary analysis because you're redu reducing the amount of traffic you're routing to canary. 10%, if you do more than that, then you're risking more exposure to more customers if something wrong happens. But in the end, this is just a recommendation. It's not a hard requirement. Next, uh, try to start with a fail-fast step uh, because you don't want to impact your developer's velocity in development and deployment and avoid frustrated development developers. Frustrated developers are not good, believe me. Backwards compatible changes for external change external resource changes. This is recommended when you're trying uh, to make a Canary release deployment. If it's, that's not possible, just avoid deploying with Canary. Fourth, um, you need to make the process visible. Again, visibility, visibility, more visibility. It's never enough. And uh, enabling the developers to override and interact with the process based on the visibility they see. It's, uh, so it's... Uh, um, they both complement each other. Thank you all. And that's it. And <laughs>